how does the practice and concept of back channel negotiations assist in these negotiations? Hmm. So there are lots of different ways that folks can work to negotiate to bring hostages home. I know you've had a former Scotland Yard negotiator on your podcast and talked about what that looks like directly. Sometimes hostage negotiations are done uh, quite directly, but between a target, maybe that's a family of a hostage who's negotiating directly with the armed group or the employer of a hostage. And um, sometimes the government can deal directly with the hostage taker, but sometimes the target of the hostage taking and the perpetrator of the hostage taking aren't able to talk, whether that is because these are governments that don't recognize each other, the situation is too volatile. So we might think, for example, of the current ongoing negotiations that are um, trying to resolve the, the Hamas, Israel, Gaza hostage crisis. You don't have the leadership of Hamas negotiating directly with the government of Israel. What you have are a series of other countries that have stepped in that have workable relationships with both sides that work essentially as mediators who try to work with one side, bring a proposal to the other. And the benefit of having these kind of back channel to and fro negotiations between third parties is that it allows them to brainstorm more creatively about what might be possible without tying one side or the other to an outcome that they might not be willing to agree to. It allows that flexibility and it allows effectively a conversation between two sides that otherwise wouldn't step into the same room. Um, so sometimes you have uh, those kinds of negotiations, even when the two sides are willing to talk to each other, um, that allows for more creative options to be generated.